Our child walks alone on the edge of a dirt road, looking down but not seeing his feet, in silence but still hearing the screams. Towards the glare of the setting sun, which cannot disappear quickly enough over the horizon over which he wants to fall. He covers his ears as he did as he lay in the hole in which his parents told him to hide. Stay there until all is quiet and then stay there for another day. They never told him that they would scream and cry and beg. They never told him that their cries could reach him underground and enter into him like some horrible malady. He didn't know that people could treat other people so cruelly, could speak a language of such hate. He wondered what his parents had done in this life or another. They had fed him, loved him, told him stories about his ancestors. They were telling him a story when the attack began. It was late afternoon and the sun had begun its descent. They heard the sounds, vehicles and voices, raucous and shrill. They stopped, looked in its direction. His mother gave the one word command. He hesitated long enough to glance at his father who looked at him from the corner of his eye with anger and grief and what else? Pride and joy. You are my joy, his father often told him. I am proud you are my son. It was still there. They didn't tell him how long it would last. It was a small village. He thought it wouldn't last long, but there remained long after the earth around him started to cool. Laughing, cackling, firing weapons. Giving orders, arguing, walking so close to where he lay, he thought, he thought a foot would break through the ground and land on his shoulder. They became quiet. He listened for a familiar voice, only heard their grunts and whispers and the sounds of night laden arriving, muffled shrieks and caws, pings and howls, a celebration of desire, growing louder, peaking, then growing louder still. And finally, a wayward winding down, not to silence, but to the occasional, the erratic, a lonesome bleat. And a sensation of warmth, the smell of soap smoke, the sound of engines, a few stray chesty bellows of triumph as they drove away. He moved aside dirt and sticks, peered out of the ground. Sunlight and vile, acrid odors greeted him. He pulled himself up. Looking about, his house was gone. Burnt to the ground. Didn't see anyone at first. Then he saw an arm. Shorn at the elbow, fingers curled as of an explanation. By the base of a tree, he saw the shard of a blue dress his mother had been wearing. And other things. He turns away, walks towards the road. Towards a lake where he will drink muddy water. Towards a place where the sun hides, a safe place. Ashes settled on his face. His arms and legs are streaked with dirt, carved with scratches. His skin is dry and sore. He is eight. And sometimes he feels embarrassed because he enjoys when his mother bathes him. He smiles somewhere, imagining her hands scrubbing his neck and back, singing. He looks forward to returning to her, although his steps take him further than he has ever been from his home. Into the rabid clutches of a twilight 
that grips him through a still and violent night, that refuses to release him. As daylight proclaims its return and demands its reward.